Hello everyone. First of all, I would like to thank you for your interest in the course Level Up Your Lighting and Rendering. So in today's lesson, we'll be looking at how to create network material create node in Katana. So first of all, your question would be, why do we need network material create? And a simple answer is, if you want to use texture maps for your materials and you want to get more power out of your rendering engine, you would use network material create node. So let's take a look at my substance file. So this is how I have textured my basic home walls in Substance. Uh, I'll be exporting the common maps and they are base color, emissive, height, metallic, normal, roughness. So these are the maps which I have exported from Substance. And as you can see, they also have text files. So text files are basically um, texture files. So in, in a simple way to explain you is uh, when you export anything from substance, it would be either PNG, JPEG, Targa, TIFF, like the common file attributes. But for rendering engines, it is really efficient. And some of the rendering engines only support texture files, which is a dot TEX. These files are really useful for com computations and they are very efficient. But the drawback is at the moment that Katana does not have its own texture manager. So you basically have to use some other rendering engines texture manager, for example, Rendermans or Arnold's, and you can convert your images of PNG into a texture file. So if you have Maya, which I guess you would. So if you have Maya, you can do it using Arnold or even Renderman plugin so because Arnold plugin comes in built in Maya. I'm going to show you with that. So you go to Arnold, you go to utilities and you select texture manager that is TX manager and you'll get this kind of a window. So now if you have like a specific folder, you can select on the folder textures out here and then you can click on browse and select those textures which you want. And then you can click on the create.tx for selected and it would basically convert all of your images from that folder into the TX files. So once you have your TX files, we can basically move into Katana and start linking them to be used in random app. So the workflow is pretty simple. What you need to do is you need to create a network material create node. So let's go to some open space here and I would say network material create. Once you do that, it will give you a node like this. As you can see, it's like a folder and it has like a network image on it. So let's take a look at it. So once you look at this node and we'll also look at its parameters, you can see it does not have any materials other than one network material. And this is the same thing which you can see in the parameters. So in this one single node, this also acts like a material stack or a group node where you can create multiple network materials in one single node in case you want to repeat the same texture files or same nodes from one to the other one. So for now, we'll just name it like walls. And if you go into this material, once you're in there, you will get output on the right. What output basically means is this is the data that is going to be passed on to your main pipeline inside of this node. So the output of network material create node would be one of this thing, or maybe even multiple depending. So as you can see, first we have like DL, which is basically 3D light materials. So 3D light surface, light, light filters, etc. We are not going to use 3D light for this one. We are using render man. So we'll go to PR man and for 99% of your materials, you're going to be using PRMAN BXDF. So PRMAN BXDF in general sense is basically a shading algorithm that tells RenderMan on what kind of a material it is. So in the common sense, BXDF is bi-directional scattering distribution function. Now that is a bit complicated, but it is basically a function that describes how light is going to interact with the surface. And in RenderMan, most of the materials use a standardized function that tells RenderMan how the material is going to behave in context with light. So in, in order to use the BXDF, PRMAN BXDF, we need to con connect it to a shader node. So the node which we are going to connect it to is PXR surface. So PXR surface is basically your main material or main surface node which holds all the parameters such as diffuse, specular, 
subsurface, etc. So you're gonna connect your PXR surface node to the PRMAN BXDF. Now in order to get your main texture files, we'll also need PXR texture. So you can go ahead and PXR texture. Once you have your PXR texture, you can click on the green or basically you can select its parameters and go to file name and browse your file. In browse, you can select the texture file, which is .tex and select base color for diffuse and plug it into the diffuse parameter. So go down on diffuse and drag the result to color. And that is basically how you connect a texture to the surface to the PMN BXDF. And what happens now is if we go up the level, now this node basically has walls material, which has the texture file of base color linked into the surface node that is connected to the BXDF shader. So basically now we have walls material that is using the substance painter texture. Now, if it would, would have been that easy, we would have been using substance for everything because us connecting a simple texture is really easy. What we actually do is because substance is not straightforward in connection to render man or basically the PR PBR workflow is not exactly as straightforward as we see here, like connecting the diffuse color with the base color texture or connecting specular directly to the metallic one that doesn't work correctly for us. So if you look at any material, it's, it has a bit of a network in it. So to make things easy for you, I'm going to show you how my network was made. And that is going to be like a base start, which you can use. So if you look at the base color, it's RGB node is connected to the PXR blend node. The RGB goes into the bottom color. Then there is a metallic node, which is basically the metallic file, metallic texture file. And the alpha of that metallic texture file is going to the top alpha. The output of this whole thing, which is a result RGB is going to the diffuse color. Similarly, we use another blend node and connect the base color and the top alpha and use its output, which is basically the RGB and connect it to face color and edge color of the primary specular. This will give the specular highlights for this material. Now to get roughness, what we basically do is we connect the alpha of the roughness to the roughness of primary specular. Finally, we take the RGB of normal map and put it into a PXR normal map node and use those outputs and directly plug it into the bump node. Once we have done that, we'll basically be able to get the walls material directly from substance as they were interacting into the render map. And now to make your life easier, what you can do is you can select all of these nodes and duplicate them and connect them to more outputs. Now, how do you get more outputs here? Because once in the last example, we saw that we only had one material, which was like walls. Where did I get all of these other outputs? The simple answer is when you look at parameters of this network material create node, you can add more and more materials to it. Simply go on to the click add button and create add network material. And that's how you can create more and more outputs and use just one single node to create all of your materials because there might be some textures which will be repeating and common for different materials and you would like to use them. Now this is directly from substance, but you can use this to create more procedural materials. You can use this to create even more better and more complex materials for your different networks. So I recommend you play with it and let me know how it goes for you. All right, then I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Take care. Bye bye.